polio outbreak. That was the ominous headline which faced the city of Hull on October the 5th, 1961. During the following week, newspapers in Hull and throughout the country pinpointed the alarming spread of the disease. The task facing the city health department was enormous. Speed was vital. The medical officer of health set the target. 300,000 men, women and children to be vaccinated in one week. The first job was to tell the people of Hull how and when they could get the vaccine. At press conferences, up to the minute news was given, and soon the location of clinics was known in Hull and the neighbouring areas. Twelve new cases of polio on the eve of the campaign gave it a grave impetus. By noon of the first day, 150,000 people had been vaccinated. Supplies of the vaccine were quickly running out. The Royal Air Force stepped in. An aircraft from RAF station Leckenfield flew to Manston Airfield near to the factory to obtain these urgently needed further supplies. Packed in special containers lined with dry ice, the vaccine was carefully and quickly transferred to a waiting van. First, the vials are spread out on a table, spacing them well apart to allow a free circulation of air at room temperature. And then they're left to thaw. handful of sugar lumps and two drops per lump. The Lord Mayor of Hull and other members of the corporation took their sugar lump vaccine and obviously enjoyed it. Like the sugar treatment, two drops of vaccine make the dose with syrup. The strict rotor system was arranged for every class at the city's schools. This meant that lessons were barely affected and it also avoided queues. To speed up things even further, parents were asked to complete the card authorising vaccination for their children beforehand. As fast as they prepared the sugar lumps, they were gobbled up. As with the schools, a rotor system meant that lost working hours were kept to a minimum. This operator will be back at his workbench in a few minutes and there's no sore arm to worry about. But it wasn't just shoppers who used the facilities, anyone could come into the stores. Usually there was a short wait, and then the formalities of the vaccination cards to be completed before the sugar lump with its vaccine was handed over. Over 15,000 people got the vaccine in one store, a tribute to the excellent cooperation between private enterprise and the local authority. How did the campaign work out? A month after the first case was notified, I met the Medical Officer of Health for Hull. Doctor, as Medical Officer of Health for Hull, you've been the director of the first mass immunisation campaign with Sabine oral vaccine to be used in Western Europe. What was the object of this campaign and do you say you've succeeded? We'd hoped to give as many people as possible in Hull this vaccine and I think that when I tell you that we gave it to 96.3% of the population I think we can claim fairly that we have succeeded. Briefly, Doctor, what conclusions have you come to about this new oral vaccine? This new oral vaccine has two main uses. The first, to use it as we did in an emergency to break an outbreak, and secondly, to use it as a long-term measure to protect the community as a whole against poliomyelitis. Oh.